Hi, how's it going? Good. How are you guys? Tired? <laughs> I just stole a couple bites of eat to eat, so I'm now energized. Yeah. <laughs> My brain's working once again, and so Jack's probably gonna gonna need a break pretty soon. You good? Really worried about how close to my stomach the microphone is because it is <laughs> rumbling oh. big time so <laughs> people are going this is a sundowners thing going on here the sun's down we're going crazy over here i'm glad that you were able to make it my friend yeah. Yeah. we didn't think that you were going to be able to so this is an awesome treat that you were able to sneak on in I'm, I'm thank you so much for squeezing me and i was just mentioning it on in the, the onboarding that i had belated Canadian Thanksgiving today. It's not a very popular holiday or that well known, but for, you know, uh, we, we had to reschedule ours. And so um, I couldn't really commit to a time. So I kind of snuck on and said, Hey, you guys, is there a time when I can peep in and, you know, help you guys celebrate and everything? And, and oh, so oh. thank you so much for accommodating me. Hello, Canadian here, Julia. So uh, oh, very you. popular on this end. <laughs> good. I'm good. Glad to hear it. So and as well, a couple of us, yeah, a couple of us Canadians around. That's good. That's good. That's unusual, oh, actually. Hey. All right. <laughs> it's all yeah, Canadian. I, hey, I was born. Or my, my family was raised in Canada, Nova Scotia. So, but oh, I'm a, a Nova I'm, Scotia. I'm, I'm one of those Americans. Yeah, we forgive you. Yeah, you're honorary. <laughs> for, for today, you're an honorary Canadian. Tell yeah, us we about brought your up game. you. Yeah, we brought you up. We've brought yeah. your game up a few times over the course of the streams in the chat on the streams. Everybody, there's always a crew that's ready to go. Hoorah, Julia, Prince and Diamond. Yes, <laughs> I, you have a popular following on uh, Twitch. You stream regularly uh, every single week. Crimson Katoo's Day. I'm a huge fan. Uh, also with Dan Policar, who does your music. Uh, Crimson Diamond, styled after Colonel's Bequest. So you actually <laughs> you're typing on the keyboard into the game old school style but at the same time it's it's a comfortable way to play a game it's not as mean as the old games used to be yeah I, i'd like to think so I, i'd like to lead off by saying i was i'm not a good adventure game player really so when i started making my own my approach was i want to make something that i could actually play and finish and enjoy and Colonel's Bequest was a lot like that. It was actually a really revolutionary game design where you know you stumble through the game and you don't you're not necessarily stuck on a puzzle here or there. And you get to enjoy this wonderful story and you got you have a different outcomes and everything. And of course, aesthetically, I i I'm really connected to that look as well. The 16 color EGA color palette. Dan has done a wonderful job using an actual genuine Roland MT32 synth, um, composing the music for the game. So it's going to look and it's going to sound, it's going to play like adventure games, but I, I like to say like the, the edges have been sanded off a little bit, uh, make it, a, make it a, a little more approachable for people. Hopefully even people who have never really played a text parser adventure game, uh, because I feel that type of interface is, you don't really see it too much nowadays, but it is my absolute favorite way to interact with the game. And I hope to introduce it to other people. And there are other devs, same as me, who are, who are making text parser adventure games, and I just I, I want to, it to be seen and enjoyed by many more people, even those who aren't nostalgic for it. Yeah, it's it's absolutely beautiful, and I've been a beta tester since the beginning, so I have to say, beyond the first level, the first sort of day or the first chapter, it, it changes. You get to see more of what's going on. You get to go outside. You really get the feel of the environment you're in. The characters have so much depth. There's also like a write-up of every single character in the instruction book you know there is a know. manual there, there is, is a manual yeah. like for me the favorite thing about uh, getting a new game as a kid was reading the manual playing the game and then reading the manual again and and your game is just it's delightful and it's pdf content right <laughs> i'm so glad i'm so glad you feel that way um i actually i have it open here i don't know if i can share my screen to show i know you guys have been having some issues with audio but it's a kind of thing where it, it doesn't necessarily um won't to be too much of an obstacle for me yeah, um can it, we attempt throw it in yeah a, a chair yeah. a screen chair Please, okay let me beautiful. try this yeah let me okay. get my camera okay let's see if this is going to work all right here we go um so i want to first t uh, take a look i think this is live now i'm just looking at my other screen okay perfect yeah Great. Yeah, so I just want to quickly, by looking at, you know, there's a few different settings, of course, here. Um, I, I like to to make things optional for people who might not remember the style of game or who want to play that older way or people who want to play a more modern way that they're used to. So we've got text piece inventory, graphical inventory. 
traditional Sierra type of movement, tapping the arrow keys to move or press and hold arrow keys to move, which is people what people are much more used to nowadays. So I want to give that for the for the people who remember, you can play it the way you remember these types of games. But if it's for for people who who don't and are playing something like this for the first time, you've got these other options, and it defaults into a way that I feel most people who haven't played this type of game would would want to play. There's even a tutorial room. I'm gonna I'm show this really quickly. Mm -hmm. I, I included this because yeah, people are not used to text parser adventure games, and so I wanted to give a step by step from some of those most ba basic commands. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly go through this. So you can type in, you know, you can look, you can look at the room, and all of it is it's very. There's no voice acting in this game. It's all to do with text and reading and understanding the text. Uh, making your own voices. Oh, it, we're going to the... give it voices. <laughs> Part of the fun. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, there's some sounds. You can look at Jack. And you've got this, you know, Colonel's Bequest style almost look of first look at a character. You get a lot of that detail that, you know, you, you won't get upon second looks. But if you look at him subsequently, you know, they things change during the game. So he might look busy. He might look agitated. He might be doing other activities. And so what he what he looks like at a certain time will also give you an idea of what's going on in the game, what's going on with him. So I'm not going to go through the whole tutorial because I do want to show the whole game really quickly. But you can, yeah, you can talk to Jack. Um, I'm going to open up this door to leave the tutorial. And, and that's here. the other thing is you've got shortcuts, which I remember from games like Police Quest. You know, what if you don't yes. want to type out your full phrase? You can just do initials for things yeah, that's, like open that's, that's, a, that's something I did want to actually also emphasize. I'm not going to go through the introductory sequence because that would take my whole time here. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, but but there's this introductory sequence here that tells you the story about the game, which is basically fisherman finds a diamond in the belly of a fish in this area of Crimson, Ontario, which triggers this whole rush of people who come to this land and they, they want to find diamonds and everything. Um, and here's some of the upgraded graphics that I've been working on during my art stream. So I do stream every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, Crimson Tuesday. Um, so it's yeah, now we're getting into the placeholder stuff. And so I'm going to conveniently skip over this part mm -hmm. but everything's going to look as polished as the final game and which is this is this is the final game as you start and yeah so you play nancy maple you are a, a rookie mineralogist you want to go to go to school for this but right now you're a clerk at the royal canadian museum and you get to travel up north of crimson and you get to do field work and find out what's going on in crimson and if there are indeed diamonds in this area or if it's you know it's somewhere else these diamonds all kinds of things so you get to meet these characters and I mentioned that I do want these games to be easier to play than the other games from that era. So there are some, con you know, convenience, quality of life things. So I've got this graphical inventory, which is not something we had in those other games, but I'm I want to kind of put in the best of everything in into this. But for people who do want that, you know, we have a text-based inventory as well. You have this. You can look at these items. It's it's a bit of a an upgraded inventory as well, like this. So you can look and examine things here in that menu. It is. And, and getting uh, the notebook as well, the yes. notepad, to kind of collect information and see what's happening, I find is helpful because I don't have to write it out myself on a piece yeah, of paper. Yeah, so, so that's something else I wanted to have. And so, other, of course, other games have done this, like Thimbleweed Park, and a lot of other games um, of this era, of our modern era now, have, have a notebook function where you mm -hmm. it keeps track of where your objectives are. And so I, I didn't want, there's something about Colonel's Bequest that I wasn't as fond of, which is you could walk into a room and have an event trigger. And you you know the game progresses and you don't you feel like you don't have a lot of control over that until you've really gotten a handle over the game and played it you know multiple times. I wanted to exactly. make the player like feel like they're comfortable exploring and talking to people and not worry about progressing the game before they're ready. So the notebook explicitly tells you what you need to do to progress this game. Um, the first thing you need to do, of course, it's chapter one. You're going to introduce, introduce yourself, and so that that's the first bit. I gotta you say, just get an idea. Absolutely yes. stunning color palette. It really, really <laughs> brings me back to that Colonel's Bequest. Like, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and of course, my, my full credit goes to Doug Herring, who was the artist on the Colonel's Bequest. Mm -hmm. um, just to me, the most beautiful pixel art rooms I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. This, the reason you know, I, I started doing this was I started this, this as a pixel art. I wasn't deciding I'm going to make a game. I said. I've learned how to make pixel art. Well, what do I want to emulate? And what I wanted to emulate was the beautiful look of, of, of Colonel's Bequest. And my favorite of this, the SCI Zero engine type of games. And you, you notice I, I have been using those, those shortcuts. There's these keyboard shortcuts you can, you can use. And just for people, some people, I've, I've had people message me saying they have trouble typing, like uh, in doing inputs because of dexterity issues. And so that's for them as well as speedrunners who also really mm -hmm. appreciate that, that ability to input something really quickly. 
which I've seen you do a little bit of yourself on on your own stream, speed running your own game, which as I mean, a dev, <laughs> that must be quite the experience, you know? Uh, yeah, my uh, my my times are, are. I thought my times were pretty good, but mm -hmm. they were nowhere near the pros. It was really impressive to see them do the inputs and everything. And I've 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 actually I've I've made some some subtle changes to the game that are actually in my this current build right now to make things a bit easier, not only for speedrunners but for people yeah who want to have have shortcuts for for doing things. Um, so it's it, they're wonderful. The speedrunners are the best testers you could ask for. They're they're so meticulous and so persistent, and they've been playing this over and over again. So they give me a wonderful reports on feedback, bugs, way to, ways to make things work smoothly. Because if things work more smoothly for them, it's going to work more smoothly for other people. And I just want to an yes, additional yes. thing is it teaches you to type fast. Apparently, especially if you're speed running. <laughs> well, the first the the speed running does for sure, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually really wonderful because these kind of games, and when I was growing up, and Anna, Anna and I were the same generation, when we were growing up, these games were kind of accidentally educational mm -hmm. because they taught reading comprehension, typing, spelling, um, just just a whole raft of like vocabulary, a whole raft of, of of skills while, you know, while not really meaning to necessarily, but I know we've spoken to so many other people who've had that same experience. I'm not sure how much more time I have. I'm just super aware yeah, that you I'm guys are waiting. like booked sure full, booked solid. To cut in Joshua yeah. since yeah, please. Uh, 559. <laughs> yeah, we are, uh, we're just about out, uh, out of time. Tell us actually, actually, we got some time after Mark. So if we want to keep Julia a bit longer, we can. Oh, please do keep yeah. Julia a little longer. In case longer. we don't, like, where can we find some information about it going forward? I know you mentioned that you do your, your stream. Did you say Tuesdays? Yes. So I am on, uh, if, you, if you go onto my site, which is thecrimsondiamond.com, you can find all the links there. So I've got a Twitch channel, which is A underscore Maple Mystery. Mm -hmm. I stream every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And sometimes it's an art stream. So you saw the introductory sequence art. It got kind of MS Painterly at a certain point. Oh, I'm upgrading all that stuff for, for new versions of the demo and, for, of course, for the final version of the game. And the music is done also when Dan has time to come on. Dan isn't like he's a touring a musician, so he's sometimes busy and isn't available. But when he is, he's composing on that Roland MT32 on those Tuesdays. And you can find me also on Twitter. I'm at Julia Minamata. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's all those things are hard, hard to remember and hard to spell. So I would just encourage you to Google the Crimson Diamond and you'll find all the stuff there. Yeah, because you also have a newsletter that if, if you go onto your website and subscribe, you'll get a, an absolutely beautifully done newsletter regularly on time uh, every month. And you'll get to see what Julie is up to, too, in the games and, and everything that's going on. Yeah, and Check if you out. actually, if you have the time, you might as well just stick around in the stream and uh, and then we can jump right back. You know, like Jack was mentioning after after sure. this next uh, this next segment with with Mark. So let's go absolutely. Ahead. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, let's yeah. go ahead and jump in and jump into that. Uh, hopefully, our our stagers are realizing that we're not having anybody leave, and they send them in. <laughs> so to be determined on that. Yeah, I wanted to show you guys a bit of a treat here because uh, they, so the, there is a playable demo that's available on Steam and on Itch.io, um, but uh, it's restricted only to the inside of the lodge. And so you get, you go through all the rooms in the lodge. You get you get your you know the lay of the land and everything. You don't get to leave the lodge though. And so um, there there are seven chapters all together in the game. The the demo is the first chapter, but uh, subsequently you get to go day and there are day and night cycle. There's a day and night cycle. You you are there for over a few days, I think. And yeah, you get to go and explore the lodge grounds. So this is stuff I wanted to show because this is not something you can get you get to see in the demo, but um, this is the outside of of. Uh, of the Crimson Lodge. So there's a bunch of different outbuildings here. Uh, we've got, of course, you know, you've got this gazebo. You've got a wonderful, wonderful bench that you can sit in. You can sit in most rooms in, in my game because I just felt like there's no reason why not. And it kind of, I, 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 <laughs> I, I mean, I was kind of having a, some back back issue problems and I was thinking, I just want to sit down all the time. And, and so this, this is kind of has to do with that. And open and close all the doors because that's a thing I always have to do whenever. Yes. I... Yeah. So so that's a that's that's actually one of the speedrun categories is open up all the, the cabinets and drawers and cupboards in, in the game. Uh, so I just want to also quickly show some of these outbuildings. So I've done some of these outbuildings here and uh 
they kind of they break out off to a, a sort of a interior cutaway look so you can't um unfortunately enjoy these but in the full game you'll be able to enjoy them i want to just go through some of these a tour a tour mm -hmm. of the lot so these are some cormorants that are nesting in the area and a lot of this game is just stuff that i'm interested in personally like I, my, my parents always loved to do bird watching i loved going along with them and of course mineralogy and rocks and all that type of a thing that was something i was really in love with and i'm still i'm still i'm learning so much about those things too in my own yeah, but there's there's this uh, wonderful boathouse and it's actually kind of funny because a lot of these buildings I just created as as this was just an art project and I wasn't thinking about a game. So I created locations that had no real purpose to them, but I, I invented purposes for them later. And and I, I feel like I've I think I've used most of the most of the the available um rooms, but some of them kind of don't exist much for besides um flavor. Right. That's the excitement, though. Like in a game, say, like the original Heroes Quest, there's some rooms in town you just can't go into. And I can imagine what's in them, but I can't look. And I wouldn't have cared if I couldn't do a damn thing in there. <laughs> if I could have just opened that door. And that that's what you give me with your game. Oh, good. I'm really, I'm really glad to hear you say that. And, and just stuff like, yeah, the, you want to, you want to, the, the shed, you want to pump water? Pump water bit of a splash at the bottom there yeah it's just it's stuff i honestly i started this just as something to build and, and like a dollhouse something really enjoyable to to just be in and to inhabit and then i started to gradually teach myself adventure game studio and this game is done in adventure game studio uh just i want to make her walk around the rooms i want to connect the rooms i want to animate i so i started to teach myself all these things very slowly and create an idea in my head about yeah what is what is this place why does this exist who built this why is it still here? Why is it in the middle of nowhere? And the set, so the setting really helped me create the story after the fact and the characters, like who, 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 who is interested in this area and why, and and um, all that stuff is stuff that I've interests of my own just over the years. And so I'm really, really happy that I. That it's it's kind of hard to 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 talk about researching for a game because i think a lot of developers they just really get wrapped up in that research and i had to tell myself to stop because the more research you do the more you know the more ideas you get i could do this and this and this and eventually i have to say no i can't i i love this stuff so much and i just could go on forever but i, I need to eventually commit and build a thing and that seems that's why the, the... the boxes would get bigger over time with the games that we love because <laughs> the people we'd get involved in the series there'd be so much more research you'd go from a game like this to a game that's this thick by the time you get to like yeah. games quest six yeah. And that's probably yeah. why we hear a lot of the developers that we've talked to today saying that they had planned to make this game in one year and it became two or two <laughs> yeah. years and it became four. Yeah. Have Absolutely. you yet heard that story? I planned to make it in four years, but hoorah, I was done in two because I, I haven't really come across that story yet. <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't that doesn't that happen very often. space venture. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it, it's out now. How, how flexible is the, uh, the parser? I mean, I think the most frustrating thing about any mm -hmm. text game is if it doesn't understand what you're trying to ask it to do. Yes. Yeah. This actually, a lot of people don't know this, but Adventure Game Studio has a baked in parser that is actually incredibly powerful. Um, I, I try to include as many synonyms as possible. So like, for instance, look, you know, there's trash can, you can look at trash can, waste paper basket. Oh, that needs a space. That's a typo. Um, you can look bin, you can look garbage. I, I, I tried to cover all the bases on yeah, these yeah. and actually, yeah. So I, yeah. And, and the, the, the command, the, the coding in this is, is really actually good for that. You can open cabinet and walk closer to the cabinet. There's some, there's a little bit of walk closer, but you can be more specific. Um, and also what's really funny is the speedrunners have come up with like really shorthand parses that I hadn't even thought of that just exist in this game. Um, so it, it, it's, it's pretty flexible. And, and whenever I, I get feedback of something that people can't do. I, I try to always try to include it. There's also uh, one more thing. There's also a parser log that if you do want to help me out with, with testing the game and, and helping me build a more robust parser, I have this off as default, but you can turn this on. And this just explains what that is. And what this is, is if you enter a word into the parser that the game does not understand, it exports it to like a, like a notepad document almost. And so it'll record all the ones that it doesn't recognize. And so if you want, you can turn this parser log feature on and uh, play the game as, through as many times as you like or whatever, and then send me that 
that that file. It's a TMP file or something, but you can open up, up a notepad and see exactly what's in there. You're and, taking uh, a book right out of, Al, like that's Al Lowe's playbook because when he was <laughs> having people beta test his Leisure Suit Larry games, he he would have all of them try everything and send in, you know, he'd get collect all of their responses and then put pretty much all of them into the game, which is why you can type the most random <laughs> stuff into his game yes. and actually get a real developer created response. And I, I really like that you're doing that, Julie. Thank you. Yeah, I, I I understand that parsers are are are, are a, you know a tough sell, mm -hmm. and they, they that is a bit of an obstacle for people to overcome. So I'm really trying to make this as as smooth as possible in terms of people not getting stuck. Although I will say I don't use the word use in this game because I feel like use is a little bit of a cop out in a text parser. Ask about. So many games that I would play back in the day wouldn't understand the word ask or about. And I'd say, ask about fish. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. I remember thinking, oh, no, that, that made it a lot trickier. <laughs> yeah, some people, uh, some people, you know, for instance, right now, Jack is too busy to really talk to you. So he won't. I mean, he'll talk to you because you have to talk to him to get to the next right. the next stage. But you can't ask him about anything right now. I want to be his friend so bad, though, at the beginning, because he's always so busy and just so neat and prepared for things that I just I want to follow him around and learn from him. <laughs> he's the jack of all trades, mm -hmm. indeed. But you can yeah, you can talk to these people. You can talk to PP present people. That's another one of those shortcuts. Um, mm -hmm. they, they're all kind of they're all kind of listed. I don't want to go through all this. You can play through the demo. But yeah, so the people all have their own their own um, abbreviations and everything just to keep everything pretty simple. Um, and you can see as the note as you go and talk to the people, the notebook does up update. And after you complete this, it'll tell you to go to the dining room, and you get to hear a beautiful waltz that Dan composed with Roland MT32, and so see a dining room cutscene and get some more of the story. Um, so yeah, it's 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 really nice too because I get to learn from all the games that have come before and and try to figure out pick and choose what I think is going to work for for mine. And, and I'm super fortunate to have that. Okay, so Jack and I are going to have a competition here. See who could get through it the fastest. We're talking speed runs. Yes. Me versus you, mano y mano, Jack. He says no. A real, a real run I could do, but you no, know, adventure games, I'm horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that I think the any percentage completion of the demo is, I think the current record is 45 seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> it's a tall order. I don't order. anything that fast. 45 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I spent 45 seconds just sitting down in every room. Oh. Yeah, I just, that, I take that long to decide where to sit in the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It really is. These people, th th and there's so many inputs because it's a text parser, but I make mistakes constantly. They're amazing. Amazing. And Wonderful community. I'm the type Speedy of person when I play adventure games, I have to touch everything, I have to look at everything, and I have to talk to everyone due to my Good. obsessive compulsive yeah. disorder. Yes, so, everything Jack, win, on I everything. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, I'm the same way. And I save <laughs> the most obvious thing till last because I don't want to be right. Right. <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> like, no, I didn't mean to get the solution. Yeah. Oh. Lucas Arts games would sometimes do that to me. I'd click the last one first by accident. You know, they kind of have that protocol, like click at the top of the line mm -hmm. and work your way down because none of them are wrong. But in Sierra, it's like, oh God, what if I pick the wrong one? You know, <laughs> it exploded. <laughs> I'm so glad that you were able to come in. Like, it really, mm -hmm. I, I well, love the energy. So I love me. the game, and I, I'm. That's no joke. I, I would like to have a. I'm challenging someone to a speed run and I'll, I'll live stream it and maybe I'll learn how to live stream by then. And, uh, and awesome. <laughs> I'll try to be there. If you do, please let me know. I always, whenever anyone streams the demo, I try my best to show up and just be in chat because it's free play testing, first of all. And also I can just see, you know, see the, the, the people in chat and say hi. And, and if they're interested in adventure games and that's wonderful and hopefully they'll, they'll be interested in mine. Game on. <laughs> Julia, we appreciate you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks, Julia. Time Great to see you. For uh, taking your time away from Canadian Thanksgiving, and uh, yes. and you Thank know, you. I'm missing I'm missing hockey for this tonight. I know not everybody mm -hmm. enjoys enjoys hockey from Canada, but I yeah, love I'm hockey. No. And don't tell, yeah. don't spoil the score. I don't. Want no, to... don't say a thing. I got a game waiting for me out there. Thank well, you. Congratulations. So much. Uh, the Adventure Game Hotspot, and good luck with with how it goes going forward. And we Thank wish you. you the best. Anyone who champions Adventure Games is like it's like a hero in my book. So keep up the good work. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> truly, truly appreciate that. And you, you're championing it as well.